Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Happy Luna New Year. Luna New Year is something that I celebrated when I was still in Taiwan. After moving here to the US, it gets a little bit hard to celebrate that. We still do family gathering sometime and we still eat together and there's red envelope and things like that. But a lot of memories about how we celebrate Luna New Year are from my childhood. Now as a full grown adult, I still miss the time I celebrate Luna New Year with my relatives such as my cousins, my aunts and uncles, and my parents. So I start to paint a subject that is related to Luna New Year. Now this subject has nothing to do with tiger. I know it's the year of tiger, but I didn't feel like painting a tiger. No red envelope, no mandarin orange, and there's probably not even a color red in this painting not the saturated pure red anyways. It's just about family. This photo was taken last year when my parent-in-laws visit us here in Seattle. One morning, we were making dumplings together and my oldest kid, who was 12 at that time, is the first time he ever tried to make his own dumpling. So his grandma, which is my mother-in-law, taught him how to do it. It was such a fun and sweet moment and just happened that the lighting was really beautiful during that time so I took a photo of it. And to me, Luna New Year reminds me of family and family time together. Now even though my in-laws were not here right now, I decided to make this painting. This painting reflects my feeling very, very well. So I did a line drawing underneath. Now even though this is sped up, I actually spent almost an hour trying to do the line drawing. Because portraits are not easy to do, and human hands are kind of hard to do, and here we have two portraits, four hands in this painting. So I am really trying to undertake a huge challenge. And what makes it a little bit more tricky is that the angle of their head. They are both tilting down, and I am taking this photo standing up. So the perspective and the foreshortening becomes pretty interesting, to say the least. So the first wash of the painting, I just paint the basic skin tone. I started from the light value, so it's very important to keep it transparent. Make sure you have enough water in your mixture and make sure you have a clean wash. Now before the wash is dry, you can do some wet on to wet, put some value on the wash so that you can have some soft transition from light to middle value. My skin tone mixture is very simple, it's just cadmium red, some cadmium orange, and a tiny little bit of cadmium yellow. Now even though we are Asian, now even though I'm painting Asian, doesn't mean I start to use a lot of cadmium yellow. If the skin tone is very yellowish, it doesn't look very healthy, it feels like the person is losing blood, and that is not a good look. So after the first wash is dry, I start my second wash and paint some middle value shapes. And immediately you can start to see the structure coming out once I have a little bit of the contrast to create lighting and structures. And I soften some of the edges when I want it to have transition from light to middle value, but I leave some edges sharp just so that it can show structures a little bit more. So understand and know the facial structure is very important because you want to paint with what you know, not just what you see. Because if you have a good understanding of the structure of the face, then when you paint all of the middle value and light shapes, you have the confidence that you are painting the right shape. And that sense of confidence will show through your brushstrokes. Now onto my mother-in-law. The lighting on her face is actually very, very tricky because the light source is actually the windows on the right. So you do see her shoulder and her arm catching that strong light. Her face is actually not receiving the light from the window, but rather the bounce light from the table. The table is white, so the bounce light is very, very strong. So that's why you see her face sort of underlit. Now, a face that's underlit is usually not that pleasant to look at. It's usually like a kid trying to make a face, putting a flashlight underneath their face. It's that kind of lighting scenario. So a face that's underlit is usually not that pleasant to look at, even looks a little bit odd. 
So that is a huge challenge that I am facing when I'm painting my mother-in-law's face. But I do want to keep the lighting because it feels kind of nice and warm to have that lighting underneath. It almost feels like the lighting is from the dumpling or my son's hand or the things that he's working on. So I do like the lighting, but I just need to keep it very subtle and try not to emphasize on the fold of the skin and the detail on the skin too much. So it keeps her look relatively young. Now I start to work on my son's hair. Now my son's hair is all black. So I actually want to put a little bit more different colors. So I put some cerulean blue, I put some red just to make it look a little bit more interesting it looks a little bit more rich because if i just paint black then that's actually going to look a little bit flat and connect the hair color to the cat shadow on my son's face the cat shadow from the glasses frame and the darker shapes on his eyes and now i'm starting to paint the glasses on him the glasses here actually helps me tremendously because it shows the angle and the structure of the face very, very well. And I darken the tip of the nose just a little bit, make it a little bit warmer so that it projects out. So I'm adding some dark detail here and there, but I'm not trying to add it everywhere. I want to keep the skin tone clean. You can see once I painted a dark color, I try to soften out so that it blends into the middle value. And that's pretty much it for the skin tone. I try to keep the skin tone to three layers the most. If I paint too many layers, it can make the skin tone looking dirty and I don't want that. Painted another layer on the hair just to make the hair darker. And now I move on and work on my mother-in-law's hair. She dyed her hair a little bit, so it's a little bit redder. So I can use a little bit warmer color for that. It's important to paint the big shape of the hair though. I'm not trying to paint every single hair strand. That's not what this painting is about. I try to treat hair as a separate structure as well. Just a few thin brushstroke to interpret the hair strand. And that's about it. So I make an initial wash for the hair, do some wet on to wet on it. And again, I bring that dark value down onto her forehead. And I added a little bit of dark value here and there, trying to emphasize the eye a little bit, some of the shadow, the nose and the bridge of the nose. Now in terms of the teeth, she's smiling pretty brightly. So her teeth is showing, but I'm not going to paint individual tooth because it is not necessary. Just treat them as a group and create a structure, and then it will look like a group of teeth. So it's more important to have that dark in the corner of her lips, corner of her mouth, just to create a little bit of sense of space, and that will bring out the teeth. My parent-in-laws really, my parent-in-laws are very supportive of my YouTube channel. My wife actually told me that her parents, especially her mom, tend to play my YouTube video over and over again at home. And it's really funny, she doesn't skip ads. She's hoping that it will generate more ad revenues for me. So it's very, very cute. I really appreciate that. It's a little bit embarrassing when you know somebody you know is watching your video, but I really, really appreciate that. My mother-in-law is certainly the type of mother that really takes care of you. And I can certainly see that passed down to my wife. So when it comes to my kids, my wife is always the one with more patience. She took care of the kids very, very well. Me, on the other hand, I am actually not as patient as my wife. Especially when my kids are having too much good time, they're a little bit loud. I actually can take loud noise very well, so I tend to get a little bit impatient when that happens. My wife, on the other hand, she can endure their loud noise very, very well. As a parent, I have a lot to learn, and I really think my mother-in-law and my wife, they're a really good example of a great mom. Anyways, back to the painting. So I started to paint the black t-shirt of my kid. And again, just because 
it is black doesn't mean it has no color. I still put some warm and cool color on it just so that it looks a little bit more interesting. It's a little bit more colorful. The sunlight is pretty warm, so it's important to incorporate those colors. And I also move on to my mother-in-law's shirt. Her shirt is pretty light, so I mix a warm gray, but with a little bit more water. It's very important to leave that highlight of her shoulder and her arm on the right. It is also a very good time to adjust the silhouette of her face. Anything that is lighter, you can cover with darker value. You can probably tell that this painting is bigger than the size that I usually work with. I like to work small, so the usual size that I work with is either 10 by 14 or 12 by 16. This paper is 20 by 14. And the reason I use a bigger paper is that because I need to fit two people in it. And I want it to be big enough so that I can at least render the facial feature on both of their faces and that I can show their emotion as well. Painting with bigger paper can be a little bit more tricky because you need to have more mixture for more coverage. And while you're painting a bigger wash, the wash itself may dry inconsistently, which means that part of the wash can be dried while the other part of the wash can still be moist. So it's a little bit tricky to do. If you are still learning, if you're just a beginner, I suggest you start with something smaller. Now I'm painting the arm, giving the second wash and also do some wet onto wet on the knuckle area. Similar to how I render the teeth, I'm not trying to paint individual finger. I try to treat them as a group and I try to paint the structure of the fingers, the whole hand, so that it looks dimensional without being distracting. Still, it is a little bit tricky. Hands are not easy to do and here we have four hands. This is why I spend extra time to do the line drawing, especially for portrait. For scenery, it's a little bit more forgiving. You can have proportion off just a little bit. You can have the structure a little bit more mushy and you can get away with that sometime. But for portrait and for things like hands, if things are way off, it's not going to look pleasant and it can actually distracting people from enjoying your painting. You can have something off by a few centimeter or less and it can start to look weird. So having that fundamental knowledge of head drawing and figure drawing is very, very important. And that is something that I am still trying to practice as well. I'm not saying I'm a master of it. And this is the reason why I sometimes use Procreate to do some head drawings and portrait sketching. You always learn from doing more. So the hands are almost finished. Now I'm just adding a few dark areas to enhance the structure of the hand and make it more dimensional. Onto my mother-in-law's hand. The lighting in this one is a lot more tricky. It's not getting a lot of the direct light, so I need to paint the occluded shadow so that it doesn't look flat. Watercolor does dry lighter, so when I first put down the value, it may look a lot darker, but as it's dry, it's actually a lot lighter. So his shirt is, so his shirt actually become a little bit too light. I actually want to darken it, so I go over it yet again. It is very important to know when to stop though. Sometimes you want things to be a little bit darker, so you're just adding more layer to it, but it just end up looking dirty. So there are times that I make that mistake. I paint a little bit too much. I overwork the painting and it looks darker than I want it to. So it's better to just mix an intense enough mixture so that the value looks right, right off the bat, instead of trying to go over it over and over again. Adding some more detail on her shirt. And I remember during that stage of the painting, I feel like the sense of lighting is not strong enough. But we are comparing the whole painting against a white background. So that could be the issue. So I just decided to leave it alone for now and paint the things on the table. The things on the table, these are not the focus of the painting. 
they are just the setting they're almost like the prop so i am not spending too much time on those i try to paint them loosely and as long as it's there and you can sort of tell what they are is good enough so the filling of the dumplings is in a huge metal ball and i am trying to make that ball a little bit smaller if i painted the same size that will actually look if i paint the same size it's going to look very distracting there's also a cup of green tea next to my mother-in-law i moved that cup a little bit trying to create a good composition and also trying to connect shape as much as i can so i'm just trying to paint the dumplings they're in this plastic tray so i'm just painting a few shapes and then i soften those with a damp brush so that they look loose it's more about just painting shapes different edges and as long as they are in the right value just minimum amount of details will do it's reflecting the surrounding so it have different colors and things like that and again i try to render those very loosely i kept a few sharp edges for the bright reflection on the metal bowl because of the pandemic the travel restriction and all of that it's getting very very hard for my wife to visit taiwan that's where her hometown is and that's where her parent lives even though her parents came visit last year usually during luna new year is the time for a married woman to go back to their mother's house and regrettably it's very difficult for my wife to do that now of course we have technology to help we can do video call and things like that but it's just not the same and i'm pretty sure that they still miss hugging their daughter and look at their daughter face to face spending some time together so i sincerely hope that the travel restriction will be lifted soon the whole pandemic situation will be a lot better and i just hope everybody's staying safe and healthy and now i'm painting the background this is a very important step and you can see as soon as i paint the background the light starts to pop before this, we only have white background to compare our value with. So that is why the sense of lighting is actually not as strong as it should be because the background is completely white. Now, as soon as I give it a little bit of value, I'm able to bring out the light on the figures. Take a big brush and make a nice clean wash. When you're painting background, you don't want to use a small brush and make an inconsistent wash. You can do some wet on wet, get some variety of colors and shapes, but these should look intentional instead of accidental. And here is the finished painting. I hope you enjoy this sharing and I hope you like this painting. This is certainly not an easy painting for me, but it's a very important one. Once again, happy Luna New Year, whether you celebrate this or not. I hope you are able to spend time with your loved ones and have a wonderful day wherever you are. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I will see you in the next video.